So this is different, huh? Welcome to my home. There's a good chance that you're at home like I am. I'll tell you that it is sure easy to go stir crazy by being home all day. Let's talk about some online tools that can help you survive being cooped up at home. Let's start with eating because, you know, eating is good. My go-to for food delivery is seamless. Where I live, it seems to cover all of my favorite places. There's no monthly fee to use it. I like the way it organizes my favorites under the My Seamless tab. Apparently, my go-to restaurants are a whopping three. A chicken place, a sandwich place, and a good place for Chinese food. Apparently, people really, really like DoorDash. At one point, it was ranked the most popular food delivery app. Now, I'm not a DoorDash expert. It looks a little busy, but it's very visual. Seems like a great way to find all kinds of food. Then there is always Postmates. This is always a great option if you can't find your favorite food place on those other guys. Postmates was my go-to if I wanted to get a ridiculous amount of Taco Bell food delivered to me. Is that healthy? No way. Was it comforting and delicious? Yes, very much so. Or as they used to say, yes way. Looking at these apps, I've also noticed there are ways to receive your meals with a no contact option. That's good too. Let's talk about LastPass. Why? Well, I'll tell you. So at this point, we are all concerned about our physical health and rightfully so. Let's also use this time to make sure our online health is healthy as well. If you're trying out all kinds of new services while you're at home or you use a ton of services already, it's always a good idea to have unique passwords for each site you go to. I've been using LastPass for years. It is a password manager. I keep track of my username and master password. Then I have LastPass generate and store unique passwords for each site I log into. Do I know my passwords to these sites? Nope, but LastPass does. Can that be a pain? Sometimes. Most of the time, it's pretty simple. I have the LastPass extension running on Chrome, and that will fill in my passwords if I'm logged into LastPass. On my phone, I have the LastPass app that handles my passwords. One of the reasons I switched from iOS a while ago was because of how LastPass worked on that. I say worked in quotes, not exactly great at the time. LastPass on Android is pretty great. Now, why did I pick LastPass over all the rest? Two words, Steve Gibson. Before my CNET days, I worked at a place with a security researcher who I deeply respect to this day. His name is Steve Gibson. Here's what Steve had to say about LastPass some time ago. Quote, this thing is secure every way you can imagine, and it's simple. I've completely switched my entire solution for managing passwords after spending days researching it and testing it and playing with it over to LastPass, end quote. The takeaway, LastPass is very secure. If you don't wanna use LastPass, okay, find another thing. Just don't reuse the same password on multiple sites, please. For peace of mind, social contact in some way is very necessary. Since we're all supposed to be physically far away from each other, how about hanging out online? I'm an Android guy, but one of the things I miss on iOS is FaceTime. Why? FaceTime is super simple. I think that everyone that I know who has FaceTime knows how to use it. Is there a learning curve? Not really. Also, the video and audio quality was outstanding whenever I would use the service. Plus, there's group FaceTime, so you can chat with many people at one time. The downside? It's for iOS and macOS only. Then there's Skype. It works on everything. Is it as easy as FaceTime? No, but once you get it all set up and add your contacts, you're good to go. There's also text chat in the case you're not up to facing someone with a video call. What about for work things? I've used both Hangouts, Meet, and Zoom. They work. Do I like either? No. Is that the app's fault? No. It's the meetings. I mean meetings. Who likes meetings? I'm sorry, Zoom and Meet. I'm sure you have lovely personalities, but you just don't do it for me. Learning stuff. If you told the grade school version of me that adult me would voluntarily take online classes to learn stuff, I'd say you were crazy. I'd also probably wonder why you were talking to child me about adult me. I mean, that's just kind of weird. Anyway, Let's keep that brain sharp while you're cooped up inside. Currently, I've been using LinkedIn Learning. Previously, it was known as lynda.com. There are all kinds of skills you can pick up. In the past, I've used these courses to learn Premiere Pro after Apple improved Final Cut. There are videos, transcripts, exercise files, and notebooks for courses. The exercise files are really useful. If you're trying to learn how to edit a video, 
you can download a package of files which includes videos that corresponds to the course. Then you can follow along. If you're not sure of what course to take, there are also learning paths. On the business side, you can learn how to be a manager. On the creative side, you can learn how to be a digital illustrator. On the tech side, how to become a front-end web developer. The learning path section gives you a lot of information. That web developer path contains over 34 hours of content and 13 courses. Some companies offer access to LinkedIn Learning as a perk. Look into it if you haven't already. There's also edX and Coursera. You can take free classes from all kinds of institutions. Here's one offered by Stanford on child nutrition and cooking that I took. It was very helpful in figuring out what miniature human beings are supposed to eat. Oh, don't forget about physical exercise. I've been a fan of Beachbody On Demand for some time now. It contains a variety of workouts for beginners to advanced, several programs center around body weight exercises, so you don't need equipment either. Finally, there's video. When you don't want to do anything or you just want to watch the adventures of someone else or both, so much to watch with television's warm, glowing, warming glow. First up, you got to have Netflix. This is the base service at this point. It's got a ton of comedy specials to get you chuckling. Want to do a Mad Men marathon? Yeah, you can do that. Want to watch a world with a horrible future? Well, another one. There's Black Mirror. It's like now, but shinier. Do you want to throw up in your mouth a little? Check out Love is Blind. It's like the super soldier of reality dating shows. It's something to behold. If you're looking for a secondary on-demand video service, I'd probably go with HBO Now. That thing has tons of quality movies and television shows. There's also a huge backlog of content, and there's still new episodes of Westworld. However, if you're at home and you're looking at a world of streaming, it can be a little daunting. All those options. What do you watch? How do you pick? Let's go through the shows. What, it's been 30 minutes, but I just wanted to watch something super quickly. What happened? Stop, take a breath, try out Pluto TV. It's a streaming video service that is presented kind of like a traditional cable system. Pick a genre like entertainment, pick a network, and watch. Videos keep coming one after the other. Full disclosure, Pluto TV is owned by Viacom CBS. Viacom CBS is also CNET's parent company. You could also try out CNET's favorite live streaming TV service, YouTube TV. It's a really good deal, has a great cloud DVR, and you can always try it for free. Just turn on YouTube TV, pick a channel, and let the networks do the rest. If you're looking for some of the best free streaming sites, check out this video. I know the guy who did it, and he's a sharp fellow. Handsome, too. If you've got questions, comments, show ideas, whatever, let me know. I'm Ayaz Akhtar, and I'll see you online.